hello, everyone, and welcome to the Daily Dose of Hope. I am Chaplain Bob, and I want to thank all of you for being here today, or whenever you're watching this. Um, the Daily Dose of Hope is a place that you can come to on a daily basis to connect directly with God. That's right. We do this very simply by picking one Bible chapter or one Bible book, whatever it happens to be. Of course, there are 66 books in the Holy Bible, and we pick one of those, and usually we use a passage or always in context, and uh, then we share it with you, and then it's your job, and God uh, will connect with you when you seek Him. So, today we're going to be looking over my shoulder here. You'll, you can see our title is Will, and we are going to be contemplating this idea of my will versus God's will, and... We're going to be looking at 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18. Before we get started, let's look down below here in the description box. Down below here is three links. One is to our Facebook page. If you like Facebook, go to the Daily Dose of Hope. And there we would appreciate if you would like us and you would follow us. If you are into video and you want, uh, you know, you love YouTube or you love Rumble, we have links for both the YouTube for both the uh, YouTube and the Rumble channels. We'd appreciate for you to subscribe to those channels. It's free; it doesn't cost you anything, and then it gives you all the content so that you can share it with as many people as you would like. Let's go ahead and bow our heads, Lord God, Mighty Father. We thank you and praise you for being a mighty and a powerful God. We love you, and we praise your holy name. We thank you, Lord, once again for being a God that chose us. We thank you, Lord, for being a faithful God and a good, good Father. Lord, perhaps somebody has a sin on their heart. Maybe somebody has something going on in their uh, life right now that's causing them to stumble. It's always a good idea to bring up 1 John 1, 9, which is pretty simple. It says, Lord, I confess my sin to you, and I know that you are faithful and just to forgive and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Lord, we thank you for that promise in that verse. And we thank you, Lord, for always promising to love us. We pray all of this in your Son, the Jesus Christ, the risen Savior's name. Amen. Okay, on the screen uh, there in front of me is um, our Connect, how to reach us on Facebook, Rumble, and YouTube. Um, and you can, you can roll back the video if you want to get that information a little bit more. Um, we're going to start in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 to 18, and I'm titling this Will. That's right, just Will. And we're going to be looking at three exhortations by Paul, Paul the Apostle Paul. Some know him as St. Paul. Paul, the same Paul who met Jesus on the road to Damascus. This Paul writes here some things that all Christians must do, not just the church, uh, excuse me, not just individually, but the church collectively or corporately. So this, these exhortations, and there's several, we're only going to look at three. Uh, I believe in this section there are, I want to say there's nine exhortations. I picked this because somebody um, that um, uh, here in our, in our village had posted this in Tagalog, and I thought this would be perfect for us today. So let's read together. Verse 16, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Now, Paul gives us some very, very important information here that, again, all Christians must do individually, but the church corporately should do these things. So let's look at these and break this down. Let's go back to verse 16, and you can see it up there. It says, rejoice always. Now, when I look this up, I always look up uh, what, what we're uh, studying, and when I look this up, the idea of rejoicing uh, means to go head on into something, go into something uh, with that idea that this is, whether it's good or bad, this is going to be great because God will be involved. We want God's will. 
And I think that when we rejoice in all things, here it says rejoice always, we ought to remember what God has already done for us. He's made us clean. He's given us a Savior who took away the sins. He took our place on the cross, Jesus Christ did. And we are going to have a home in heaven forever. There is no end for us. We will go on living forever. So that's why Paul says here in verse 16, we must rejoice always. Let's go to verse 17. He says, pray without ceasing. Now this idea of praying without ceasing, many pastors have messed this, uh, this verse up uh, by saying that you should pray, you know, eight hours a day or you should pray 24 hours a day. Paul, what he really meant here is that you should pray continually throughout the day. Don't let your prayer end. Many times when we end prayer, we say, amen. And really the word amen is just an agreement. It's we're in agreement and we usually say amen corporately. You don't have to say amen at the end of your prayer. You can continue your prayer on. Uh, yesterday I was praying for a uh, missionary here, um, was here in the Philippines. He's now back in the States and he had open heart surgery two days ago or three days ago. His name is Mike and you can pray for Mike. And Mike uh, has a heart condition and the doctor said that the, there was a successful surgery. He's back at home with his children. Um, the doctor said he may or may not recover fully. They're waiting. But the thing was, the reason I'm telling you this is not only for you to pray for Mike, but also my prayers and your prayers can continue, and Paul encourages us to continue our prayers throughout the day. Don't give up. Don't make it just the morning or the evening, but continue throughout the day. You see something where, you know, if you see an ambulance driving by, pray for that ambulance. Pray for the person that's going to be helped by that ambulance. Um, pray for safety for yourself all the way throughout the day. So that's praying without ceasing, keeping the prayer going. And verse 18, and in everything Paul says, give thanks. We learned this a couple days ago, right? We are to give thanks. When we went over uh, Colossians chapter 3, if you remember Colossians chapter 3, you can go look that up. Um, but we are to give thanks in all things. And here he says, in everything give thanks. Same writer in Colossians, here in 1 Thessalonians says, in everything give thanks. That means in the bad stuff. Not just in the good stuff, but in the bad stuff. It also means give thanks in the mediocre stuff. Stuff that's just okay. Today I had a sandwich, a breakfast sandwich. It was just okay. It was average. But we ought to give thanks even in the average things. It goes on, Paul goes on to say, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Now look at there. God in Christ Jesus. So God in Christ Jesus. Jesus says he is one in God, God the Father. So we know that we have one God in three persons, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And we're, we're, we have proof right here in this verse, verse 18. But what Paul's trying to explain here is that this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So what is the will of God for you? Well, look, let's go back. Not that way, this way. First, he says, rejoice always. That's God's will for you. Pray without ceasing. That's God's will for you. And give thanks. That's God's will for you. So today, you've learned something about the will of God. And you should always be praying for God's will in everything that you do. Because down at that little sign that's over there, next to me. You can see it over there uh, at the bottom. It says, my will, next exit, or God's will, the opposite exit. 
We have this choice every day. You hear me say this a lot on the Daily Dose of Hope. We have this choice every day. We can either live in the flesh or we can live in God's spirit, meaning we can be connected with him. We can do his will. We can ask for his will. We can stay in the word. We can be praying without ceasing or we have the choice. We can go to our will. What's my will for this day? What do I want to do for this day? I have a quick story I'll tell you. So I'm going to tell you this short, a short story of this, a shortened version of it. But many, many years ago, when I was uh, serving in another part of the Philippines, I decided one day I was going to take a day off. And that was common. Missionaries take days off. They take weekends off sometimes. And so I, took, I decided I'm going to take a day off, and I don't want to be bothered by anybody. So, for some reason on that particular day, I grabbed an iPad and I threw it into my uh, backpack. And I don't know why I did that, because on my day off, I don't normally do that. Why would I go to a mall, uh, which is where I was going, and carry a, uh, an iPad? Doesn't make sense. But something told me, put the iPad in and go. But my intention was, don't be bothered by anything else. It was my will for that day. I didn't want to be bothered by anything else. I was just going to do my will on that particular day. Now, what's the problem with that? Living in the flesh. I'm doing what I want to do. And guess what? What I want to do is not going to be God's will. Sometimes it may line up, but not always. And so on that particular day, my will was to go do my thing, having my movie, I think I was going to go to a movie, my you know, snack, whatever I was going to eat. It was going to be my day, my will. But then I got a text message from somebody, um, a guy named Ferdy. And if Ferdy's watching, hello, Ferdy. And Ferdy contacted me and said, would you come and pray for my mother? And Ferdy's mom was dying of cancer. And so I said, Lord, this is my day. You know, I'm, I'm off duty today. <laughs> and God said, no off duty today. Um, that backpack that I had you uh, fill with an iPad, use it. I went to Ferdy's mom, walked in the house, um, had a little traditional snack. And then before you know it, uh, Ferdy wanted me to pray for his mom. And it's a good thing I had my iPad because I was able to use the iPad uh, to pull up the Tagalog version so that the family could read and know the words of John chapter 3, verse 1 to 17. I had it at that time mostly memorized, so it was easy for me to do in English. Um, back in those days, I don't think I had a phone that had, I don't think there was a Bible app in those days. So I don't think I had a, a phone that could tell me what was in the Bible. But nonetheless, that Bible uh, on, that, on that app that I had must have been a, must, phones must have had it actually because my app on my iPad had it, but for some reason my phone didn't have it. And back in those days, I was probably using an old phone. And uh, for, for the sake of this story, it was ended up being God's will on that day that that iPad was put in the backpack it was not according to my will. Again, my will was to live uh, that day for me. And God, uh, he has a way of doing this sometimes. Sometimes he can just make it his day for you. And he can force you into something, um, or at least make it very presentable, very obvious that he wants you to do this, and he'll call you to that. And that's what I believe happened on that day. Now, long story short, um, uh, Kari was the name of the mother of Ferdy. She passed away that night about 12 hours later. Um, she went to be with the Lord. But on that day, she believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. So God's will, that exit. My will, that exit. Which one will we connect with today? That's the question for all of us. Let's pray. Lord God, mighty Father, we thank you and praise you for being a mighty and powerful God. We love you. We praise your name. We thank you, Lord, for um, allowing us a chance to share the word of God with you, with all this audience. 
And we thank you, Lord, for giving us wisdom through your word. And uh, thank you, Lord, that um, we're able to have experiences that we can share with others so that they can be inspired and that they can be encouraged and they can be motivated. We love you, Lord. We pray all this in Jesus Christ, the precious Savior's name. Amen. So that's it. Um, that's the story of Kari, Kari and um, her son, Ferdy. You probably heard that before because I've told that before, but it's always a great story to tell. All right, everybody, I'm going to say goodbye. Uh, it's time for me to walk my dog. I'm going to take her for a little walk. And here is a little bit of Skyly Shay. Uh, we're going to play um, Shelter from the Storm. Enjoy this one. When life keeps falling and wonder where he is in all this mess.